Welcome to the Top Secret Wedding Podcast. Today, our quick tip is... When you're working with couples, be yourself as much as possible. Be personable, be authentic, and don't be a robot. Love it. Let's go. This is the Top Secret Wedding Podcast, where we share top secret tips to help you take your wedding game to the next level. I'm Annika, and I'm a wedding coordinator, enthusiast, and venue manager for one of the best venues in Idaho. I'm Chris, and I'm a DJ, master of ceremonies, and all-around lover of weddings. We're on a mission to improve weddings and wedding professionals everywhere. Okay, so today we have so something excited. very special with us. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> let's have you introduce her. Ah, yeah. all righty. Well, we have Becca here today. She is one of our venue consultants at LaBelle Lake, and I'm so excited to have you on and interview you. Thank you. Yeah, so, excited to be here. <laughs> Becca, where are you? Where are you from? Originally from, actually originally from Idaho. I, I was born in Idaho, in Salmon. Idaho. In Salmon, Idaho. And then, but I mostly grew up in Nevada. Okay, so. gotcha. Mm-hmm. And how did you end up, what's your, your journey been to La, LaBelle? How'd you get there? Yeah, so my degree is in recreation management. Okay. Um, my last year of school, I was looking for an internship and kind of stumbled upon LaBelle Lake. And um, yeah, it's been perfect, a really good opportunity for me. I honestly, if I'm being completely honest, weddings wasn't really what I was wanting to do. Um, what were you wanting yeah, to do? Yeah, what were you originally wanting yeah. to do? So originally, I really love psychology and that's what my degree was originally. Um but because I really enjoyed my classes in high school with psychology. Okay. Once I got to college, I felt like it was completely different. The classes were boring. It just wasn't my favorite thing. Sure. Um, so I switched over to recreation management because that's really what my passion is in. It's just outdoors and recreation. Um, so I kind of wanted to do something that uh, was both of those things as far as like therapy, working with people and recreation. Okay. But so hopefully one day I'll get to that point. I think it's still something I'd like to do. But I yeah. have enjoyed weddings a lot too. Well, sometimes you got to be a therapist. Wedding days. Yeah, <laughs> for true. sure. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so tell us what you do at LaBelle. Yeah. So as Annika said, I'm a venue consultant at LaBelle Lake. Um, so kind of basically what that means is. I am assigned couples who book the venue, LaBelle Lake, um, and then I work with them throughout the process from beginning to end and help them with anything concerning the venue. So timeline, setup, Mm -hmm. vendors, sometimes you help them with? Sometimes. Sometimes I communicate with vendors, um, especially if they have questions about the venue. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. So, and I'll, I'll throw my two cents in here because uh, I've gotten to work with you a number of times and uh, I've noticed that you're just a very, um, well, you're organized, but you're also very empathetic with your couples, which I think in the wedding space is absolutely necessary, right? For like sure. you said at the beginning, can't be a robot mm-hmm. and you're very empathetic with your couples, which I think your couples can see that and they really appreciate it. And so, so anytime you're doing a wedding, I mean, any a little bell wedding. I'm always happy. But when I see you're like doing it, I'm like, it's yeah, awesome. <laughs> well, same goes for you. I'm always excited when you're the DJ. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, I feel like I'm I'm hogging all the you're questions. You're good. Um, so I guess kind of jumping back to the roots of you getting into La Belle Lake, what did you expect going into weddings? And what's your, how do you see weddings now, I guess? Oh, that's good. Yeah, a good question. Um, honestly, I have to think back about when I started and what I thought going into it. Um, I honestly had an open mind. I didn't really have like any preconceived um notions or opinions. Because it was just an internship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just an internship. Just no, there for three months. Really yeah. Not. But big deal. It's not gonna be my job for right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I didn't really have a ton of expectations going into it. I knew it'd be fun and I knew I would learn a lot. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. But knowing what I know now, I have definitely learned a lot. 
more than I thought I would originally. I felt I learned things that I didn't think I needed to learn. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. But. Yeah. Do you have an example of something that you learned? Um, honestly, it's been really cool to see the behind the scenes of a small business. Um, my dad owns a small business, and so I saw a lot of that growing up. Um, but this job really added to it as far as like having people sign contracts and collecting money and um, a lot of that stuff has been really interesting to me. Um, but I've also learned a lot about working with people and different personality types and getting to know different people. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely work with a lot of different personality <laughs> types. Yeah. Uh, so our th this podcast is mostly geared toward wedding vendors, people who work in the wedding space. Yeah. So I wanted to get your take on what your the characteristics of your favorite vendors, right? Um, so the people that you're excited to work with, what are the things they do? So let's start with photographers and videographers. Is there anything that you've seen them do that you're just like, I love it when they do this? Or I mean, the opposite can be true too, like what you hate. Mm-hmm. Um, I love when they come up to me, they approach me and they talk to me and they ask me where good locations are on the venue property. Um, I think that is beneficial for the couple. I think it's just beneficial for us to like communicate so we know each other. So that way we can like work well with each other in the future. Sure. Um, that goes for videographers as well. I feel like yeah. Is there anything that they can do instantly to get on your bad side? Be rude. Okay. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much anybody, right? Right. Uh, okay. What about florists? Ooh, florists. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound bad. You're good. Um, I love working with florists, but I also sometimes hate working with florists what's, what's, being honest what are the difficult parts working with florists like what are the pain points that could be avoided um is it personalities sometimes sometimes personalities. yeah okay sometimes personalities but i mean again that can be true for anybody sure. um but i feel like overall with like any vendor it's just open communication i think is really important and you know if they've previously discussed something with the the couple or a family member and I need to be aware of that I you know it's important for you to know right and I wish that a lot of the time they would communicate that more because sometimes I don't hear from them at all you know what I mean sure so yeah. yeah I feel like just jumping in with you real quick one thing I've noticed about florists not always but one thing is like I feel like a lot of times I don't even see them you know so it's like okay I know this is the florist for the day but in the time that I'm sitting there and helping with all these other things, yeah. they're like in and out so fast. And you're like, oh, they were here. There's flowers here. There's now. flowers yeah. here. Like, oh, it'd be nice to just say hi. And, you know, and of course, you know, you want to make those connections. And so you want to like tag them in your story for the day and you want to feature them with the work they've done. But I feel like so many times they're just so in and out that you're like, wait, who was this? <laughs> <laughs> kind of to go along with that too. Um, a lot of the times they'll like, decorate the arch and they'll do the tables and everything and then they'll put all the boutonnieres and the corsages and stuff inside all the bouquets inside and then they leave and then right Big before thing. the ceremony starts or like half hour before uh, mother of the bride's running up to me like where is this and i'm like i have no idea yeah. that's not really my responsibility i mean if you wanted it to be then the floor should have told sure. me and we should have communicated that beforehand but that happens a lot yeah and with that too i think because a lot of times it's just a drop and go sometimes things get missed and it's like oh well, we ordered um this actually worked, happened at a wedding we did together yeah. where it's like oh we ordered real rose petals but they're not here in ceremonies right. in five minutes and what and there was never a point of communication of like hey here's everything you ordered does this look correct it's just and then things slip and yeah yeah i i feel like florists and bakers are kind of in the same boat where they show up do their job and leave and it's kind of cool for them because then they can hit like four or five weddings in a day. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, that communication can sometimes be lacking a little bit, which is can be difficult from a from any vendor perspective that's working with them. So, mm -hmm. um, so 
if you're a florist, then try and throw some communication, um, especially if it's something that other people are going to need later that day, like bouquets. Yeah. Or rose or petals, rose petals. Yeah. boutonnieres. Yeah. Yeah. All of that stuff. Okay. Uh, ooh, what about this one's tough? DJs. <laughs> yeah. I know some DJs. <laughs> um, too. Um, so what are what are things that DJs can do that will make your job easier that immediately endear them to you? I love it when DJs interview the or meet with the couple. I sometimes DJs don't do that, which may sound surprising. It's crazy to me, but yeah. But yeah, they don't. And then they show up on the day and they're asking me like, oh, what's their first dance? And I'm like, don't you know that? Right. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so when they've, well, they've done their job. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when they've met with a couple and they have some sort of relationship there, and you're not having to manage the DJ. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's mm-hmm. good. Um, anything else? Well, sometimes I mean this goes with other vendors too, but I feel like a lot of the time I'm the middleman in a lot of situations where, like for example. It, what I just had talked about is like the DJ will ask me like, what's their first dance song? Like, Oh, I'm not sure. I'll go ask. Yeah. I go ask the bride, then go tell the DJ. And with some things I feel like that's okay. Sure. But if it's your job, then then that's less okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, LaBelle is a very unique place because, uh, most, most venues that I work at, that they say, yeah, we've got a day of coordinator. I'm like, okay, well, they're maybe probably not going to be very good. Uh, LaBelle is different because you work with them throughout the whole process. It's mm-hmm. not just a day of. Um, and that's not to say that you guys don't have other like planners come in, but you guys are very different where you know a lot of those details. Um, so I can see them asking you to ask the, the the DJ to do something instead of them going straight to the DJ if they don't have a relationship. So that could be a lot of extra responsibility on your part. Yeah. If if they don't do their job. Which, like I said, for a lot of things, I really don't mind because going back to what I said at the beginning, I try to really get to know each of my brides and be personable with them and um, make sure they know that I'm their friend. And so, like, I don't mind doing that. But if it's every single thing and it becomes like and it, it makes me unorganized, that's what's frustrating for me. Yeah. It's harder to do your job because you have other responsibilities. Right. If you're, yeah. Uh, okay. So what about other planners or coordinators that are coming into your venue? What are things that they can do that make them, they go on your good list? Communication. Communication. <laughs> I'm sensing it I think, here. Well, I think it is universal between all vendors. I think that communication is really very, very helpful. Not only for me, but for the couple as well. It gives them peace of mind, I believe. Um, But for other things for planners and coordinators, um, again, just to be like kind and respectful to me. Yeah. Because a lot of the time, I think when they work at other venues, it's just like, oh, you're the maintenance person. I'll (laughs) post you to me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is true at most venues. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So kind of respecting what you do. And I mean, that can be established very easily before the day of. If they just one quick phone call, one quick text, email, whatever it is, like mm-hmm. that can be established. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, we can go through these quickly. What about officiants? Honestly, I don't, I haven't really worked with too many officiants. Okay. Um, I don't really talk to them ahead of the time, ahead of time really before the wedding day. But on the wedding day, it's nice to know their plan of action i guess okay if they're planning to do something weird and you guys are helping send people then yeah okay uh what about catering Mm, catering i like also when they ask us ahead of time where they're setting up so they know where to go for sure when they get there um that's also nice because specifically our venue there's only a few access points yeah and so it's nice to know that you can park right here and drop your stuff off and then go park your vehicle. You know, so it's just little things like that, that it's good to tell them ahead of time that when they don't talk to me ahead of time and know that stuff and they get there the day of and they're like, oh, where's Becca? We were told to 
talk to her. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out a million other things. It's like adds to your plate for yeah. the day. Yeah. yeah. And if it's a big food truck, then it's like, <laughs> okay. Where do we put you? Right. And yeah. But if, but again, you communicate that beforehand. Mm -hmm. Well, and a lot of times too, catering stuff, it's a timely setup. You know, they, they have serve time at a specific time. So the more you can coordinate before the day, the easier that day is going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I also love, um, I don't know. Well, we do details meetings at La Belle Lake where we sit down with a couple and go over details that are important for their wedding day. I love when um, caterers especially attend those details meetings. It helps a lot. That's interesting. Why don't I ever attend those? I don't know. I should. You I, should. It'd I, be great. Yeah. For like any of our brides, I would recommend that like most of their vendors come. Yeah. And that way we can all meet each other and then we know each other the day of. And I know specific details that I wouldn't have to know just over email or phone call or something. Yeah. yeah, that's I didn't know I was invited to those. I will be at every single you're one. You're invited. Yeah, you're because, invited. You're always invited. <laughs> because when when the team knows what, what everybody else is doing, then you can just all support each other. Exactly. So and if there's like one person that's not part of that team and they just show up and they try and direct the whole day, then the rest of them can be like, no, this is the, <laughs> we met with the bride we know. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Um, what is your favorite part of the wedding day? Oh, good question. Uh, when I get to eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that is one of my favorite parts. Sure, totally. But, but I love um, the ceremony, obviously, but my favorite part of the ceremony is right after their pronounced man and wife, husband and wife. I love like to see the joy on their faces and then to look into the audience and see the joy of like all of their close friends and family members. And it brings me joy as well. I love that. That's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, what would be your number one tip for someone who wants to get into the wedding industry? Good question. Sorry, I'm on pops. You're good. You can think we can it. edit this out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no rub. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I would say I would consider myself a... Uh, not an emotional, well, an emotional person and also just somebody who wears their heart on their sleeve. And at the beginning, when I first started in this industry, I felt like my feelings were hurt a lot of the time, whether that was by a bride, whether that was like by a vendor, you know, mother of the bride, something. I felt like it was very easy for me to get my feelings hurt. And I've learned a lot to just let some things roll off my back and also remember that it's their wedding day and they usually only get a wedding day once in their lifetime so i guess what i'm saying is i would recommend just remembering that that it's their wedding day and they just want it to be as perfect as it possibly can be and so to not take things personally that's good. Love it. That's difficult to do. That's Very hard difficult. to do. Yeah. Very difficult. And obviously, you know, I'm not 100% the best at that, but I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it. And I, I think most of the time, at least in my experience, people aren't directing things directly at me saying, you are a terrible person and you're bad at your job, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's not that. Most of the time, it's more like I'm not happy about how the situation is going. And I don't know about you, but I always try and take that on myself and it's can be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you can see that somebody is frustrated, you want to help as much as possible. Yeah. And so a lot of the time, like you said, you take that on yourself. And so, yeah, it can be difficult, but I've learned a lot from that. Um, thank you for sharing that. That's that was vulnerable. I appreciate that. So what are your wedding pet peeves, whether it's with vendors or with clients or decisions that clients make that they think is going to be great, but it's not so great? Like, what are your pet peeves? 
Yeah. So I think my biggest pet she peeve. She didn't pause. She went oh. right into Oh, it. I know. No. I know okay. what it is. <laughs> um, which, and it can be avoided too. So, but like I mentioned, we do details meetings yeah. and usually those take place about two months before the wedding day. So we sit down with them and we ask them a whole list of questions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, well, I shouldn't say a lot of the time, but sometimes the couples will, I'll ask them a question and they'll say, oh, I don't know. Not sure yet. Okay. Oh, that doesn't matter. We don't care about that. That's okay. We don't care about that. And that's a little frustrating because then a lot of the time on the day of, they will ask about those things. They care. They suddenly they care, care about them yeah. and they care yeah. about them a lot. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, whatever, nonchalant. It's like, well, what about this? Like, I actually know how to go. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of my biggest pet peeves is, and we let them know our whole process when we tour with them. Like, we do details meetings that with you. expectation is set yeah. well before. Yeah. And, and even like before, when I schedule the details meeting with them, I let them know, like, we will be talking about these things if you could be prepared for that. Most people are, but sometimes people come with those answers. Oh, I don't know, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, that would be frustrating, especially if it was a majority of the things. So that's a good one. That's a good one, that's not one I'd heard yeah, before. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, um, should we do lightning round? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, lightning round, uh, let's, let's go every other. Every let's other? Go oh no, I don't have a list. Oh, that's okay, <laughs> just make it up. Uh, okay, ready? Lightning round. I don't know if I'm going to time it. We'll just, we'll just go. We'll just go. Yeah. yeah. Lightning round. Uh, celebrity crush. Uh, Michael Bublé for his voice. Whoa. All right. Okay. Favorite color? Like a light teal blue. Okay. Oh, wow. That's very specific. Yes. Uh, <laughs> least favorite wedding song. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my. I have no idea. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to. We can cut that out. Okay. Uh, Favorite wedding song? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's cut that I'm one so out too. Sorry. <laughs> favorite, favorite wedding food? Um, I like a fancy dinner, like chicken and she pants. She I'm fancy. fancy. <laughs> yes. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Probably in a tropical area. Okay. Hawaii, good. maybe. Hawaii. And yeah. your favorite boss is? <laughs> Go oh, around. Wow. Look at that. Not because she's sitting right next to me. <laughs> no, but she really is good, right? She really is amazing. What's your favorite movie? Oh, I love rom-coms. I love like 90s rom-coms. They're so, the best. They're yeah, the best. they like, don't make them that way it. anymore. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. That's so one of them. Jeff's kids. Yes. So good. <laughs> so good. Well, thank you so much, Becca, for coming today. We really appreciate it. Uh, there are some things that I learned that I had not known previously, so this yeah. was good. Yeah, thank thanks you. for coming on. Happy to have you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Top Secret Wedding Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review us, and we'll see you next time.